Jacobin. Jacobin starts wrapping Gucci Gang on the deck of the boat. <laughs> and everybody hates him somehow more. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's possible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Hello, everyone, dear viewers, dear listeners, uh, dear patrons. Dear leader. No, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> dear leader. Uh, uh, <laughs> welcome, welcome to our wonderful D&D game, uh, Tales of Jamor, the Kraken's Wake. We are here to uh, sail on the high seas and not cause mutinies and... Uh, and kill your fellow crew members. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sarah. A, 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 apparently, especially... <laughs> ha hashtag Josh Lies. Yes. Uh, <laughs> last time, we... Uh, avoided a mutiny and picked up an unusual passenger, uh, one that um, ate a whole bunch of food, slept for 10 hours, and then upon coming out onto the deck uh, under the moonlight uh, became Spooky Skeleton Man. Uh, not unlike that of the aforementioned Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> Uh, Curse of the Black Pearl. Mm, I think that's one. Yes, tagline that is. The yes. One. Sorry. No, nobody ever remembers the tagline of the first one. But Pirates I've always, one. I've only seen the first one. <laughs> yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh um, it's the best one. I'm not into pirates. We also uh, discovered <clears throat> that uh, Seraph has uh, some, at least some connection to one of the noble families in Twillin. As a golden-winged Asimar, which are kind of a bit rare in Twillin. Some people already knew that. Some people did. It's a golden wing ASMR. ASMR. Yeah. <laughs> he, he whispers yeah. quietly into the microphone. Yes. To help people fall asleep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, with that, why don't we get right down to it? So, uh, so yes, the the nature of Braun, your uh, rescue, as it were, has been revealed. Uh, and I think all of you have pretty much seen this happen. Yeah, yeah what the heck is going on with you, dude? Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Well. Is that normal for you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's normal. How? Like, well, like curse or born that way? Uh, well, I presume it's a curse. Uh, okay. As you know. Because that usually doesn't happen. Those, those, yeah. uh, as as most of us Brunari are cursed this way. Brunari. Uh, and upon hearing that, does he look like he's Bre an undead? Well, now he does. <laughs> I'm a fire in my smite. What, while I'm he's a, just talking? I'm a charge in my smite. Well, what the hell before, is up wrong you do with that, you? <laughs> before you do that, yeah. um, <laughs> anybody can give me an intelligence check. Yeah. Um, and if you're proficient in history, you can add your proficiency bonus. Hey, cool. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna natural abstain. 20. Quick. <laughs> it's, it's upon hearing <laughs> Brunari. Okay, quick. Quick wonk note. I am using a D total tonight. So occasionally I might end up re-rolling. That's because the it, dice is it, it weird. It doesn't it's, have a d20 on it. It has a d24. Yeah. Right. So it also I, requires I, instructions. I, I'm <laughs> yeah. not cheating. I'm ignoring d21 through 24. Yeah. That's a great sound, and I love it. Yeah. yeah. Um, 22. 22? 22. Not 20. Well, but 23. So if you recall, uh, we, are, we are playing... Yeah, With so it would be a straight out of the book where twenties and ones are not automatic yes, successes but, and so failures. So it would still be checks. a twenty. You said history. History. Yes. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Yeah. Okay. It was twenty-three. Twenty-three. All Dang. outstanding, outstanding roles. Yes, you are all familiar. You have all heard the tales of the kingdom of Bronner, the fallen kingdom of Bronner, which was uh, renowned for its thieves' guilds uh, until the Demon War. Uh, the same war in which Dremonaut fell and 
uh, the, the kingdom sort of split into the, the Confederacy. Bronner also fell and uh, became sort of a haunted land of marshes and uh, just dead lands. Where is it? Um, it is located in northeast Dremena. Um, let's see, do we have it on the map here? We, don't. we do not. It is it is too north on the map behind us. Yeah, because Drummond so, is up and So imagine over. if you will, you have uh, Drummond in the northwest that goes into Kozdal, right? And on the on the other side, uh, in just south of Winterholm, uh, where it's basically snow all the time, um, you have Bronner. And if you go south from there, you get to the hinterlands and then Kirinjo. Um, one of the tales that came out of the war that's been passed down was that um, every now and again, the inhabitants of <laughs> Bronner. Sorry. Hashtag seagull orgy. <laughs> the, uh, the inhabitants of Bronner will rise from their slumber and walk the earth again for some unknown purpose. Yeah, I need to fix that. I was about to say, is really, it just all? Down. Dang, man. Yeah. Good for them. Gullets everywhere. Good, good for them, right? Uh, as, as you're recalling this, um, uh, uh, Korav, you know, kind of points the big gun at a flock of seagulls and uses them for target practice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Sh shoots them out of the shoots them out of the sky. Uh, but yes, so so Bronner, um, it's all it's a very uh, sort of plague ridden, blasted landscape with haunted glades and sunken marshes. Um, there are no known living creatures that set foot there these days because of sort of the lingering fell magic that permeates the landscape. Um, but every now and again, there are stories of one of the former inhabitants suddenly walking the land again. Hey, so, uh, you wouldn't have to know anything about a ghost ship, would you? Well, that's it, it passed by. That's what wrecked. Oh yeah, that's right. Ship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Were you like part of the crew? I was part of the crew that was attacked. Yes. Oh. Yeah. I mean, no, we picked like, him uh, up out of the wreckage. You look like he might be a little bit of a spooky ghost type. S yes, I I didn't ask for this. But so I've. I just I woke up one day. And covered in dirt. So were there any other Bernari on your, Bernari, Bernari um, on the ship that you were traveling on? Not that I'm aware of. None that you were aware of? No. Okay. You're creeping me out a little, just so you know. Well, I apologize. I will just go back down below deck. No. That's probably a good idea. Yeah, I just, just, so, wait a second, though. Do I understand, you, you might anything? think that I'm one of the, the hungering dead. Yeah. I don't crave, the, you know, I don't brains. crave flesh, <laughs> I don't crave brains, I don't crave souls or anything like that. No, you watched me eat food. Yeah, that does, I, I mean, he could technically eat food, too, if he wants to. This could be some sort of a trick. Trying to trick us? No. It's almost true. You trying to trick us? What? Zone of truth. I cast zone of truth. Oh, you cast zone of truth. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you just say zone of truth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I say, I say it too. I say it too when I cast it. That, that's because and you, then I immediately because you do that. Yeah, that's this I, is now a zone of truth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you are not allowed to lie. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> force of will. Like, Don't sizzle. lie! It, well, I mean, it, I would presume that it was some sort of trick placed on me, but 
I'm not tricking you. All right, so what were you doing on that ship? They got wrecked. It was a merchant ship. Right, and you were just working for them. That's right. You're just working like a regular person, like not some spooky undead zombie. Yeah. Can, can we just back this up just a half a click? Um, you said that you just woke up under dirt. Do you remember anything before that? Like your childhood, you know, growing up, I mean. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the last thing I remember was we were under attack. By what? Like this Demons. past. Well, that's not good. And then a, there was an explosion and. He means long ago. Next oh. thing I know, everything was dark. All right. In the demon so wars. Many things have changed. When was that? Not much of a history. Many but. and many years ago. Hundreds of years ago. So you, what, you've just been wandering around for like a hundred years? Hundreds of years. No, well, only about two years. Oh, all right. And there's more like you. That's what I hear. Why don't you all like, get together and like, have a party or something? And, like we make a kingdom. Yeah, they're totally going to do a reunion tour. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to have a ball. You, yeah. You must not have seen Bronner. Nope. No. I've been like two places my whole life. Where are you from? Well, pretty spooky place. <laughs> Just the music is yeah, perfect. Yeah, it's the music <laughs> They spooky in this music. Yeah. Kind of Twiston insane. is definitely providing the musical accompaniment for this. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> this makes Twillin enjoyable. You still, you Twillin's still have enjoyable. Most you still have life mostly. in Twillin. Mostly. Wait, wait, what do you mean enjoyable? There is no life in Brock. I mean, well, would you call it? You have life. Like what? What? Is it? No, he what? said there is no yeah, life. Yeah, but I'm asking him. No beasts. Yeah, you. What? Are All you the life? Are you on death? What are you? What is your know. existence? I don't know. Hmm. You should get um, that figured out. A little bit of introspection, maybe. Think about it some. And he just turns and goes below deck. I go and like ask him if I can do a quick physical on him real quick. And like, just see, like, to do like a medicine check and see, like, if I can. Sure. I, I'm, I'm extremely curious about him. If, you, if, you, if you don't mind, Bron, if we can do. I mean, he just. <laughs> I mean, I, here's what it is. He just goes below deck. Yeah, I want to like catch up to him and be like, hey, can, can I just do a quick like? Have you seen an apothecary or anybody in the last two years? Little... For what? I, I'm just confused. And what, what is a potion going to do? No, not a potion. Not a potion. I just want to see, like, d does your heart beat? Do you bleed different colors? Like, what's, like, is, because you're saying this was, you remember the war, but that was hundreds of years ago, and you only came up two years ago? Like, I'm confused about this. In, in a short, you're a medical, like, so mystery. Am I. Yeah. D can I do a quick, just check you over once? Do whatever you want. Cool. If I'm back, I'm just like, uh, well, that guy coops me out, and I'm uncomfortable with him on the ship. 15. Uh, I mean, based on your... Yeah, my, my general skills, like... Your general skills? Like, Zombie does his heartbeat in general, like... Uh, no. No heartbeat? No. No heartbeat. Um, doesn't really seem to bleed ish. Okay. Um, I mean, like, you see, there are, like, open wounds and stuff like that. Um, but there's not, like, blood coming out of them. Okay. But. Uh, and there, there are sections where, like, there is bone visible. Okay. Okay. No bleeding, and so no healing, really. Uh, you don't know? Nothing really looks like it's healed. Okay. No, not in that regard. Okay. You don't know if magical healing would work or not. Yeah. 
Actually, you do know, because Jacob had healed him. Yeah. Yeah, but he wasn't in the moonlight. <laughs> uh, he was also, uh, he did, his wounds were actually healed when you used lay on hands on him. What did his wounds look like? Um, well, he doesn't bleed. It's, it's difficult to tell um, because it, also, it, it, it looks like there's also some element of decomposition that has happened as well, mm. or decomposition. Cool. Uh, I mean, with a 15, um, I mean, you see what looked like a bunch of, like, burn marks, so probably some sort of fire mm -hmm. was related, maybe. Okay. Which would kind but, of... But, I mean, there's also sections that are, like, rotted, so yeah. it's, it's difficult to tell. Okay. All right. Thank you. Do I know where he's staying on the ship? I mean, yeah, I he's just staying with the rest of the crew. Okay. Yeah, I'm not on deck. With the rest I walk of the crew. above where that would be, mm -hmm. and I use divine sense, and that pings mm -hmm. celestial fiend and undead. Yeah. So anything within sixty feet of me, I know there is a celestial fiend or undead what within me? that sixty now, feet. As an aside, it has occurred to me. Mm -hmm. Now that the cat's more or less out of the bag in that yeah. particular regard, does, has he ever picked me up? I don't think I've ever done it near you. You haven't usually, you know. Um... Uh, yeah, I don't even know that you've even used it. Before. You've used, I've used it a, a couple, couple times. times. It, it's been used a couple times, but. But yeah. within 60 feet, too. Um, True. Let me. You just throw it conveniently somewhere else and it goes off. <laughs> it, it seems to, that seems to be the case. Yeah. Yeah, now we're all kind of close. Together. Yeah. It's the like party. We're ship together or something. Jeez. Cramped quarters checks or something soon. <laughs> Let me see if I can. No, of course it, it would not be a deal. Um, <laughs> it does register as undead. Um, does anything else ping? Within 60 feet of me? Let me find that out. Does anybody else ping? <laughs> <laughs> there another holy bean. Not knowledge pigeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to take it from critical roll. <laughs> yep. I don't. Uh, no. This is the book okay. checking song. No. This is the book <laughs> checking song. Some people started uh, checking. No, that's that's the only one <laughs> that, that, where that registers. Was. So, and I'm gonna assume that that's yep. uh, Bron pinging as undead. Yeah, I mean that yeah. would be. A fair assumption. Okay. <laughs> I don't like this. You look like you're agonizing over like whether to destroy the yeah. undead that's on our ship. Yeah. I haven't done anything to her just yet. Yeah, but, but you mean know. undead. Don't I mean, here's a uh, couple things. Seems to be intelligent. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's why I'm holding. Consumed off, regular food. Slept. <laughs> yeah. Didn't try to murder everybody. Nope. Yet. Nope. Yeah, I didn't try to murder anybody. Yet. Sarah. <laughs> in, no, in I'm, not I'm not. <laughs> in I'm, fact. I'm not actually up there with them. <laughs> that was just uh, me being snarky. Uh, whether direct or indirect, uh, uh, Captain Jacobin has, in fact, inflicted more party deaths than yep. this, this NPC has <laughs> That's currently. True. True. Than any. <laughs> than, than anyone else, yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most so. lethal villain we have, Captain. Just wait. <laughs> yep. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I really don't like the way you said that. <laughs> yeah. I'm scared for May. <laughs> scared for all of us. So. Um, I love this character. <laughs> so a after this sort of introductory period. Yeah. Um, Bron kind of just keeps to himself. Um, I instruct people to always keep an eye on him. I don't completely. I, actually, I don't trust him at all. I think it's kind of hard for anybody besides those of us who have rules. So, to you know, they will. In eyes they, there's enough people on the ship that, you know, yeah. they will. Um, but with that, I mean, he doesn't necessarily go out of his way to offer to, like, help with the day to day running of things mm -hmm. unless he's specifically asked. Nope. Um, but, I mean, 
over the next, you know, couple of days, nobody, you know, he seems to just kind of keep to himself. He doesn't appear to do anything unusual. Um, he'll often just, you know, look out onto the sea. Um, you know, he'll be kind of marveled at the fact that you're sailing with no sails, uh, which is pretty standard reaction. Uh, but, I mean, he doesn't ask about... He, he doesn't ask much uh, of, of anybody. Um, does Edwin know anything more about what could be causing this? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good idea, actually. That's yeah. good about Edwin. They can do something. Edwin Edwin tells you, uh, I mean, he's heard stories of mm-hmm. uh, uh, powerful undead, uh, some that turn into bats that drink the blood of, of other people. I mean, maybe he could be one of those. Uh, or, or maybe he's secretly a powerful spellcaster that has sort of mummified himself. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Just curious as to what, you know. Not helpful, Edwin. The, uh, the, the, the man, the book, the legend. I'm guessing he didn't. I mean, you, you are, you, you are asking somebody that is is a normal human that no longer sleeps. So. Yeah. 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 He's still not sleeping. Yeah, that's that's also. What's he do when he's not sleeping? You don't know. He sits. He, he sits, sits next with to Twixen. me and reads. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I am starting to notice that. He and Twixen spend a lot of time just like sitting. I'm, I'm just there steering the ship, and he's just sitting there, and we're both just like not and not talking. <laughs> he's always been a strange guy, so I don't think much of it. <laughs> Every now and again, you do hear. Uh, you think that he said something out loud, and then you realize that, oh no, he he made conversation in telepathically. Okay. That seems to be a thing that he's been doing. That's right, because he does that. <laughs> yeah. Did we get away from all that phase stuff? Yeah. There's not been any like more recurring weird. No, that was a few thing. days ago. That was just, a few days ago. This is just means the captain checking up and making sure we're clear. Uh, seems to be the case. Okay. So I just go through the crew and ask everybody, are they okay? Is there any like strange stuff like that? Just to double check. Um. The elves mentioned that there was an unusual sort of shadow presence uh, during that time. But since then, uh, they they haven't noticed any unusual fey magic happening. Have I heard any more whispers in my ear? No. Okay. Okay. Cool. I'll worry about that if that happens again. Okay. Um. <laughs> so. Uh, That's kind of where I am right now. All right, not going to worry about it until it happens again. With this, um, <laughs> we're, we're going to expedite sort yes. of the rest of your, your journey. Uh, but we're going to do this in an interesting way. So. Open roll initiative. <laughs> uh, no, the order is going to be predetermined based on your roll on the boat. Good. So, Seraph. As navigator, or, or serving as sort of chief navigator, uh, I would like you to start with. Can I write these down. Okay, uh, <laughs> and an intelligence check using navigator's tools. So, if you're proficient with them, I don't remember if. I think we were working on. I have it listed Sarah. that you're proficient. Okay. So I think we. I think you finally. We did are. the training. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, it's basically you get to add your proficiency bonus to an intelligence check. Good. And then what this will do is, depending on what you roll. That is a 19. A 19. Okay. So, you successfully chart a course through, uh, basically along the coastline of western Drummanot. Um, Not getting too close uh, to Lilinosti um, per request by Meloria. Um... And you also manage to chart a course around some uh, reefs um, and some sort of jagged, rocky 
uh, coastlines. So, Twixen, I need a dexterity water vehicles <laughs> check. <laughs> so, so, so dexterity my proficiency view. My... Yeah, so dexterity plus um, plus your proficiency. Unless that was one of the things you decided to be to pick expertise for, which I don't think it was. What do you mean? Bards get expertise at some point. Yeah, I think I which already... Is, which is double proficiency. I think I already had it when I, like, before I... Picked water vehicles. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah, like, before so. we even had a ship. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, 18. 18. Nice. So, uh, going by um, Seraph's course, uh, you managed to easily navigate the ship through um, and, you know, make fairly good time. Uh, you're, you're keeping on pace, uh, and you manage to avoid any sort of hazards that might crop up. Uh, I'm going to roll for Tyrant Kai. Thirteen plus his wisdom, or plus seven. So that's twenty. Okay. During this time. <clears throat> Tyrant Kai uses both his water magic and his survival skills uh, to make sure that you guys are getting enough sort of uh, seafood intake to replenish any uh, lost stores from uh, food consumption. So that way, like, you're never in danger of running out of food. Um, also using his water skills to provide fresh water so that you're also never in danger of running out of that. May. Yes. I need you to roll a wisdom medicine check. Keep us all from getting scurvy. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Um, because everything's been going swimmingly, um, and your between your various potions and uh, your um, sort of. By the way, it's been three days. Yeah, we'll, we'll get I to that. I still haven't. We'll get to that. I, know, I still hadn't pulled anything out, because it's it only replenish my cape only replenishes when I pull something out, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so you have to pull something out in order. Yeah, I haven't I haven't pulled today. anything out. Yeah. Um, because of this, uh, the crew's morale improved by one. Cool. So they were, it was pretty low, but it, it has improved, um, particularly with Jacobin's uh, gestures. Um, is it, at buying the, at the, them off? Basically. Uh, but between <laughs> that... So where do we live in? Between that and uh, basically how well the trip has been going and then sort of your medical care, taking care mm -hmm. of you know any minor bumps and bruises or whatever, but yeah. you haven't had to do much. And so a lot of it's been improving quality of life as opposed to uh, fixing injuries. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that, oh, yeah. that leaves us with Jacobin. Jacobin, uh, this is going to be a charisma persuasion check. Oh, yeah, I'm great. Just straight up charisma? A oh, persuasion. Persuasion. Mm -hmm. I'm all right at I this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 22. 22. Um, over the course of this time period is you have been working with the crew um, and uh, just checking up on people um, and... Uh, just being very forward-facing and very upfront uh, and and public, um, and so uh, and and just being a little more diplomatic than usual, kind of rectify, uh, regardless of whether the situation was in the right or wrong, to at least change people's perceptions of it, of of the the situation. Yeah. Um, just what I probably acted as if I've just moved on from it. At least that's what. Uh, outwardly, that's how it would seem. Um, sure. Sure. But uh, it's addressing any further problems and, and sort of going out of your way yeah. a little bit to uh, tend to the needs of any of the crew mm -hmm. um, so as to kind of uh, bump up their morale and their, their loyalty a bit more. Um, and so because of that, uh, the crew's morale improves by two. Uh, huh. So one from me and one from him? And two from him. One from me and two from him. So, it, <laughs> so it's improved by, by three. So uh, now, 
y your party Smug bastard. Might, might be another story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But at least the crew seems to have, you know, seems to have moved on. And this is going to happen over the course of uh, about a week and a half. Yeah. Um, so, and it will t kind of take up the rest of your journey. So this is a, a fairly extended period of time. Mm -hmm. With that, it's time for the crew to make their check. Ooh. Go crew. Come on, crew. Woo! Okay. Uh, everything happens as planned. There are no unforeseen circumstances. You guys manage to avoid like squalls and storms and everything. Any damage that is taken uh, is kind of minimized by the crew. Uh, you know, performing cool, right? admirably. Um, and making repairs as necessary, uh, but all working within budget and within time periods. Um, yeah, I, you know, I had it so that things things could go catastrophically wrong uh -huh. or catastrophically well. Uh, and, for the, and for the most part, it went good. So it could either go swimmingly or sink really which, quick. Which unfortunately, if I had more time, I would have planned more interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. With agency, but it was just fine. Uh, successes usually meant nothing bad happens, but nothing good happens either. So, um, so yeah, uh, you guys arrive basically one month from when you set off. Um, exactly from uh, Ogara slash Deep Water. Um, and actually. This is, sorry, Twixen, but this music is a little too upbeat. happy. Yeah. Upbeat for where we are now. Yeah. Yeah. Twill is more. I think I would definitely catch the mood of Twill. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, yeah. several days out from Twill, or Twill, I mean is you notice um, that you can see in the distance uh, just sort of fog that just never seems to go away. <laughs> never burns off. Never, never burns off. The, the, the brightest light from the solar palace, which is in Jamor, the sun, uh, does not seem to penetrate this fog. Thankfully, oh, with, with your navigating here. skills, you managed to navigate through. Um, and the fog gets, you know, thicker and uh, to the point that you, you could cut it with a knife. And you begin to see sort of the gloomy shores come into view. Uh, you pass by. Let's see, where's my map? Oh, no, I don't have any. On the what? Top. You, you pass by, there's a small island with, uh, and you two know this, there's a small sort of fishing community that also bears like one of the big lighthouses for 12. To identify that like you, you are approaching on the southern reach, there is a rocky island here. Uh, don't run aground. <laughs> um, sort of serves as like the southern barrier as there are uh, a number of like jetties that come off of it to try and protect protect mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the bay and the southern side of Twill from uh, from storms. You manage to navigate around that. And as you approach further and further is when the rain starts. Oh, I'm going to have not, so it's much It's not a hard, heavy rain. I'm going to have so much fun here. It's just a constant drizzle. It's that, that, like, really, it's not really like a rain, it's more like that heavy, heavy mist that just makes everything wet. At, at best, yes. Yeah. At worst, it's kind of like an actual drizzle. Mm. But still, it just, it makes everything wet, damp that, at, the, that, at the least. That late September been raining all month thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm feeling. Yeah, you, you and, uh, yeah, it never dries out. Nothing ever dries out until you like you have to go inside and like stand put it by in a front fire. of fire and dry that it out. Thing. I'm on deck enjoying it. Yes, <laughs> yes. 
I'm, I'm literally like just thinking about all of the ways that I will be able to get around. And I'm actually trying to come up with a game plan of what the heck I'm gonna do once we're in Twillin. Or on Twillin. Yeah. Uh, well, you are heading to uh, the capital. Yeah. Uh, Rosington, which is on the southern shores. Um, it's a incredibly large uh, port city. Um, not unlike uh, Waterdeep would be in the Forgotten Realms. Um, th- this is the largest settlement in Twilight. In Twil- um, largely because, and you've heard sort of Jacob and, and Sarah uh, talking about sort of their homeland. Uh, and from what you, what you can easily gather and what you've picked up from other conversations you've heard is uh, there are few settlements inland on the island of Twilight. <coughs> Much like our own modern-day Australia, uh, <laughs> nearly 80% of the population lives on the Is, coast. Lives on the coast, <laughs> yeah. Uh, for often the same reasons. Zombies? Zomb- yeah, <laughs> the middle of Aust- <laughs> You guys learned something today. Stream, the middle of Australia is just filled with zombies. Say, lots <laughs> of zombies. <laughs> Too specific. And, and vampires. Things that will kill you. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Oh, yeah, I mean, and, but right. Australia has that even and, around the coast. An inhospitable too. environment. Okay. Just... Just the other direction, whereas Australia is is sort of dry and hot and miserable. Twill is sort of clammy and wet and miserable. (laughs) Um, So yes. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's populated almost entirely by (laughs) criminals. Enjoying the air of home. Yes, is uh... that would be broad. I don't know. It hasn't been that long, but nostalgic, I guess. You know. That, that is a word for our home. <laughs> <laughs> I had this memory the other day. Mm. And I've been meaning to talk with you about this. Mm. Some of the crew was, said they saw something interesting from you a while back. And I remember being a boy and seeing something quite similar. Care to explain a little bit? Where's this conversation taking place? Probably, probably on deck. Yeah, yeah, on deck. Oh, okay. Yeah, probably towards the, the front. Yeah. I'm just the leaning. I'm just leaning over the rail. The the watching the. <coughs> of all the people in this crew, you may find this a bit hard to believe, Jacobin, but I would like to tell you more, but I can't. It would endanger you and the rest of the crew. <laughs> if, whatever, if that's what you got, that's what you got. But, just know, and I'm sure you do, things are going to get worse before they get better. And if you uh, have any info that can help us mitigate some of that, well, I'm sure not just me, but everybody else would appreciate it. Now that we're home, information will be much easier to get. Maybe you can point us in the direction of who to talk to once we land. I certainly can try. Because uh, Tulane didn't really point me in the right direction. He has a habit of that, doesn't he? Well, yeah, you can say that. Oh. That's all you got to say about it? That's fine. And I walk away. As, as this conversation is happening, this is uh, during one of your shifts in which you're not piloting. Um, and at this point is you have finished the chassis Ooh. for Four Lantern. Okay. I just need to figure out how to transfer the contract. 
Yes. Cool. Um, because, and I'll say, um, you've been trying to figure this problem out during the whole course of it. Yep. Um, so give me uh, an Arcana check with advantage. Ooh. To, to essentially replicate that you have been working at it, working on this for a couple, several weeks now. That's uh, plenty. Um, it seems like, and, and, and this is through like using detect magic and identify and stuff like that on the sort of container that his spirit is contained in. Um, that it is a curse that keeps him in there. So any sort of uh, curse removal. Like remove magic or? Dispel? That's the one, thank you. <laughs> Dispel like, magic? Doesn't sound right. <laughs> um, Dispel magic is used more for sort of general applications. This requires some specialized magic. Okay. Uh, and, and with a 20, uh, there is a spell known as Remove Curse. Yep. <laughs> I did not. Okay, sounds good. So, that that seems like it is what, or, or any more powerful okay. magic than that. No, Bard's not really good to prepare. No. Oh, that's right, Bard's not with it now, right? But yeah. maybe next level, or maybe there's a scroll. I have a mission. And maybe we find someone. There we go. Potentially. Um, it may be possible that uh, your uh, resident shaman may be able to maybe. remove the curses. We'll see if there's a scroll. Okay. Oh, because you can still use a... I think I can still use a scroll, right? Uh, and and the, an the answer to that question would have been no anyway, so... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, something something to keep note. Yep. <coughs> Been filed away in the memory bank. Mm -hmm. uh, but until then, he you know, will happily I'll continue to serve. I'll put him like across the, the the workshop from it so he can look at it. Um, it one of the things to know is that you only get the benefits while he while you are. Oh, okay, I also have mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's in you. Um, you notice uh, Jean-Francois, your, your unusual language-speaking lizard, awakened our, lizard. Our, our lizardy friend. Our lizardy friend. Uh, very uncomfortable in this climate. <laughs> mm. uh, the current, so. Oh, yeah, because it's going to be cold. You, you have arrived and... uh, in the month of Emberheart sort of mid-ember heart, which is... Sounds like a warm month. Uh, it is the equivalent of late summer. So uh, this would be... Like if, if you If you say that summer starts in June, and thereby June is a summer month, this would be August. Um, so what happens I do say it's uh, But it's also about the time when, like, Summer has hit its peak and is like you're at the peak right now. So it's about 60 degrees in Twilling. Fahrenheit. <laughs> at the, at the peak Fahrenheit. of summer, yeah. 60 yeah. degrees yeah. Celsius. This is Twilling. We use we use Celsius. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it well. It would be a. There really about isn't precise measurement in in Jamora. Yeah. Uh, unless you're getting into gnomish technology, in which case they use something uh, more convoluted than Fahrenheit. <laughs> something even worse than Fahrenheit. It is, it is more precise than Kelvin, but more convoluted than Fahrenheit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <coughs> Sounds about right. Sounds about right. 
Um, so yes, uh, May. Oh, yes. No. Uh, have you taken any potions out of your cloak mm. during this time? Um, I would have taken and probably only about three out, like thinking about like what I have already. Uh, so you get a vial of acid, <laughs> a vial of alchemist fire, two vials of alchemist fire, and you said three, correct? So, so that's what you get. Cool. Nothing with uh, inherent medicinal purposes, but you're creative. Yeah. So, so that means I have three alchemist fires now. No. Yes, they're good for throwing at things. Yes, they are. Um, your shop uh, has also, at this point, uh, earned a total of 121 gold pieces. On top of what was? No. That's, that's the running total. Oh, oh, okay. So, so one more gold piece than you, than you last left. I'm like, yeah, because it was at 120. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So just add one more gold? Yes. Okay. Th there were some losses <sighs> that, that you don't know there. about, but hmm? yeah. Jacobin's not even there to cause them. No. Nothing to gain too, baby. It's just like slow weeks. Not a lot of materials coming in. People not having any money to buy stuff. You know, so long as I things happen. So long as I had enough to pay. This this is them. profit. Yeah, this is this, this is, is profit, profit, which yeah. is good. Yeah, so long as I have enough to pay Alet Roth and Sariel. Yes. My wonderful little Disney princess. That's right. I forgot uh -huh. you had a Disney princess. Mm -hmm. So. Disney princess Arcane Castle. So she has that alchemy bag that I'm very suspicious. Of. I like her alchemy bag. I like her alchemy bag a Yeah. So, with this, uh, you start to pull into the port of Rosington. Um, weather not really improved much since you sort of arrived in Twill Waters. And uh, there are a number of empty docks. So. Twix and you pull up to one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and a number of uh, what look to be, uh, you guys recognize as naval uniforms, uh, come up uh, very quickly onto the dock um, with sort of two higher ranking officials. Uh, and they're there waiting as you, as you pull up. Mm -hmm. well, okay, which one of you guys is wanted by the guard? Me. Yeah. Once the game plan goes down, I go down. And meet them. Okay. Right. Um. Are you the captain? That's right. Uh, name, please. Uh, Jacob and Stainthorpe. Right. Good last name. You said yeah. this before. Yeah, that's what. That's uh, literally the reaction that we had last time too. That is a most unusual ship. Um, where are your sails? Funny thing, Bat, uh, doesn't use sails. You hear uh, some of the other um, officers behind them uh, start to like give sort of concerned and, and shocked expressions and mumble amongst themselves. Um, your perception's not good. Well, we'll say uh, you're able to catch a couple. My, my past perception's not good. Uh, it's not terrible. It's nine. Oh, it's nine. It is. It is terrible. <laughs> so, you hear murmurs and everything, but you can't quite make out what they're what they're saying. Um, Your passive perception is nine. Right. Yeah, um, my dumb. Oh, honey. Manifest, please. You you guys have a manifest. <laughs> Sevelios was taking care. Because I was gonna say, Sevelios knows, would have. You would not know to have a ship's manifest. Sevelios huh? would have been on uh, that. And so. Um, <laughs> He just pretends to be know how to do captain <laughs> things. He doesn't. Yeah. So Sevelios, um, <coughs> captain, manifest is right. Right. I shot. Boom. <laughs> just like I would of my old uh, writ. It, it's oh a book. My God. It's a book. It's a book. Still. Yeah. It's a book. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they take it. They sort of leaf through it. <coughs> right. Um. So, so 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 you just go boom. Yeah. You're coming from deep water. That's right. 
most unusual. Uh, on naval business. Yes. <laughs> uh, what, what sort of... Which one of them? Is the one speaking or the other one of the pair of higher ranking guys here? Who, who's in charge of this set? Um, so it looks like uh, the one that has the manifest um, is it has the rank and attire of one of the dock masters. Okay. Um, the other one is like uh, like a second in command. Okay. So uh, so like a quartermaster. Okay. Uh, under the dock master, um, and the other ones are just like petty officers. <clears throat> I am going to. Use your Make a hand gesture over Jacobin's back. Right. I see. So, looks like everything checks out here. Yeah, I knew it would, of course it is, yeah. <laughs> Did I see him do that? Uh, What's give happened? me up. I mean, my passive perception is 17. Your, your passive, yeah, your, so your passive perception, yeah, is high enough. You did see. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say you and you and Tyron Kai saw uh, the gesture it, being made, and it's not like a Jedi hand gesture. It's like sign language. It's like you do doing Naruto, you jutsu. Okay. Not, not quite jutsu. Yeah, just did like was there like a glyph on his back after or anything? No. 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 Okay. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, this did not appear to be magic. Okay. This is this is more similar to how you have certain hand gestures to communicate. There we go. Okay. It, it, and thieves can't. It, it's yeah. like yeah. thieves. It it looks like thieves can't. You can't understand. Okay. Okay. You can't thieves. Can't. Interesting. Um, so they they hand you the manifest back. Docking fee is a gold a day. Right. Uh. Do, do you have a, an anticipated length of stay? Nope, not in particular. All right. Uh, so payments can be made at the dock office. You can either pay on a daily basis or you can make lump sum payments. All right. If you wish. Uh, the dock office is any you know sort of gestures down, and you see there's like a, a small building. Um, that has um, sort of a naval insignia. Mm -hmm. uh, on the front of it. Well, uh, if there's anything you need, uh, I am Doc Master Roland. This is Quartermaster Veloon. And uh, yes, just uh, let us know whatever you may need. And you see, Jacob, and you see him kind of look past you uh, when he says that. Um, <laughs> and and I, I nod in acknowledgment. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Is this tape going? Is this tape going? Flowing in the wind? Cape flapping. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a, so it's not your clothes. It's my, it's my it's coat. It's your coat. It's my coat. Yeah. It's right. Coat. Oh, yeah. Um, what was the quartermaster's name again? Uh, Velu. <laughs> Spell. Uh, v E L. So awesome that like, your whole crew Apostrophe just like has your back so you can look all Thank important. You. you just have no clue and you have no clue that you have no clue. I love it. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's perfect You're like, of him. I did the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I am so great. Yeah. Reminds perfect me of Captain Hammer. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yep. 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 So. <laughs> right. Back to work. <laughs> And they sort of turn and sort of very stiffly and abruptly, you know, click their heels and file back off the dock. Um, I need to speak to Spellios. Well, he, he's right there. Oh, okay. I turn around like I'm going to walk to him and I just bump into Oh, okay. Well, he, he handed you the manifest. Oh, okay. And he didn't, he didn't yeah. leave. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He did. Yeah. All right. So what's your plan from here? 
Well, I think we're gonna take a look around and see what we can buy in terms of a ship. Or commission one, so if they don't have a suitable one for sale right off the right off the dock, as it were. But uh, you know, if if we have to commission one, we'll certainly you know watch your ship if you need someone to take a look after it. But I, I think we have other business that needs attended to. That's fine. Well, I will uh, continue to pay you for each day that your crew keeps watch and works on my ship and uh, just keep me up to date. All right. Okay. And uh, I appreciate you keeping things in check for me for this last leg of the trip. Thank you. Well, you certainly uh, made enough kind gestures to the crew. So it, it became a bit easier once. Uh, they deserved it. They didn't do they didn't need to be in the middle of this mess. I agree. But, do what you must. Take so. a minimum a word. Yes. We don't have plans for the ship while we're here engaged, correct? So an extended loan might not be entirely unreasonable, especially since it would allow us to not pay dock fees. Their plan is Just a thought, Captain. It's quite a, quite a gamble. They've gambled much on us. You're not wrong. Let me think on it. Sheriff Zavillas will let me know what they come across. Um, it seems yeah, prudent that we can help them and it will serve us as well. Then maybe that's the way to go. And uh, I'll head towards the little uh, dock house. Sure. So we'll say you go over and um, again, you can either pay. Are those two guys I talked to nearby? Um, Roland the and Valoon. Dockmaster and, and the quartermaster. Uh, they are. Um, it, it's a it's a busy port. Okay. That's, that's um, and so you um, you do see them every okay. now and again. It's not important. But they are busy. It's not important. I just was curious if they were nearby or not. Okay. There, there's a lot of ships coming yep, and going. So. Um, I wanted to talk to Sibelius while they were off doing their side thing. Okay. Um, uh, I will say. One of the things to know for May and Twixen, this settlement, we'll, we'll call it a settlement, hmm. uh, th this is a major city. Yeah. Which is uh, probably much bigger than anything either of you have experienced before. Nope, the last time I was anywhere even like half as big as this, I ended up in jail, so. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, and I'm the bad guy. I'm not really rushing to leave the ship, okay. so. Um, Did I write down population? Yeah. Um, but it's somewhere. 30 million. Uh, I think it, no, not 30 <laughs> million. Um, it might be something like, uh, I think, so the last settlement that you were at, uh, Deepwater. 500. Population, sort of around 500. <laughs> this is a population of roughly like 45,000 people. Yeah. Oh, so, so it's a little, like, bit a little bit bigger than Pittsfield. A little bit bigger than Pittsfield, but this is no, sort of. Much more but it's much more area. condensed. Yeah. It's more condensed. Um, and this is, to put it into a historical time period, sort of somewhere pseudo-medieval, pseudo-Renaissance kind of a thing. So this, this is a very large uh, city. Um, yeah, Sibelius, I, I have been thinking very, very, very much on the offer that you made me. Um, and I have, one thing that I have to do here in Twill. Um, and if you would be willing to help me with that, it's mostly just a fact-finding mission. Um, I, I believe I may want to take you up on your offer. 
about. Dependent on what your plans are at this moment in time. Well, right now it's a matter of uh, one, drying off. Yeah. And then two. Yeah, I don't uh, like this feeling. Uh, seeing if there's a suitable ship. Yeah. But, you know, I, as I said, it's a stand-in offer. Yeah. I may just meet you up north at one point as well. Fine. In winter home. Uh, no. We're not going. It's cold up there. No. Hey, we're, we're not going up there. <laughs> no, I'll meet you back in Dremina. If, if you decide to leave before my mission is completed. Up to you. Just wanted to let you know that I, yeah. And that's, that's kind of it. And then I go and pack a bag and try and get used to this wet feeling. He to, and, to uh, and so the rest of his crew sort of uh, disembark. They kind of gather their things and they disembark um, in search of a ship suitable for Captain Savellios Oak Breeze's taste. <laughs> um, so, uh, bonus if they if they do decide to go, uh, you you do hear the coming from uh, Vale Rissa's back. <laughs> so, right. so they. So they will be taking the skull of Hermione's Grimble with them. Good. So. You're going to go with them. Yeah. <laughs> but at least he gets off the ship for a little bit. <laughs> Does anyone have the item card for Heather? Not it. Not an item. Not an item. She's not an item. Okay. It's just a head. What is she doing again? She's just a head? Heater. Uh, right, I know that was, and that's kind of why I'm asking. Before you kind of like calmed her down, uh, she would turn into a flame skull and shoot fireballs at people. Uh, yeah. Okay. And blow things up. Yeah. Okay. When it's when she as... found out that she was a disembodied head. Okay. Yeah. Not as helpful as I was. Hoping. Why do we still have okay. this? Okay. Cool. Because I'm building a body. Yeah. God. <laughs> it's it's, Duh. it's yeah. one of me. I'm building it a body. Oh, <laughs> Duh. flame skull. Oh, it's mind. yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's the it's, head of a of a. Now, yeah. up until now, uh, yeah, you yeah, have been yeah, below yeah, deck. Now. Yep. So, uh, so yeah, just just as a point of order. Yep. So you you see uh, the the rest of the sort of Emerald Lotus crew, uh, Sibelius's crew, kind of pack their things up and, um, you know, they say you know, th this may be. Uh, where they shove off, so they, they thank you if this is where they are going to shove off, so. Okay. Yeah, very, very <laughs> awkward and disconcerting, uh, and, and they just kind of, well, they kind of like clap you are, on the Are shoulder. they yep. getting off of the ship? Then? They are getting yeah. off of the ship. Oh, then, no, okay. Yeah, they're disembarking. Yeah. yeah, they're disembarking. Uh, they, they're, I thought Svelli said something about they would stay and watch the ship until he found a boat. That, that's what they're going to do. Is they are going to try and find a boat? It takes all of them to do this. Sure, they all As gotta of right like now, it. Yes. Okay. They all gotta like oh, it. Okay, this doesn't. It's gotta feel like home. I'm not paying. You know. <laughs> that, that, either way, that's fine. <laughs> As they said, they're, we do they're have not to in this out, money. We do have to figure out how much I owe them for the trip, though. But we can do that during break or something. Yeah. Instead, of doing the um, stream. Now that said, uh, so Korev is still there. Wilhelm is still there. Yeah. Kramer? Uh, Kramer's still there. Kramer does not seem to mind this weather at all. Well, no. Yeah. <laughs> you, you would expect Minotaur probably doesn't mind cold and damp. Uh, They're from Winterholm. Yep. Yes, yeah, Minotaur okay. are native to Winterholm. Uh, so where it is uh, much colder and much damper for nine months of the year. Um, so yeah, Korav, uh, Meloria, um, is still staying on the ship. Yeah, I would imagine she would be staying. Um, uh, you do notice um, the sort of amount of moisture in their hair. Her hair is like frizzed out, <laughs> and she is not happy about it. So she she you kind get of, the frizz fro going she, on. She does not want to see people, <laughs> um, and it just happened at an alarming rate. <laughs> I think it might have something to do with some sort of weird <laughs> elven reaction. Hey, your hair is also frizzed out. Yeah. <laughs> of right. course it is. Um, I'm just going to pull it back and 
tie it up into yeah. a ponytail. So yeah. it's out of my way, at least. Yeah. Um, and just for good, can I pull up the hood without activating it? Sure. Okay, yeah, because I just wanted to be like half on my head. That way it just covers my mess of hair. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. So, uh, the moment Twixen, you come up above deck, is you see um, some of the dock workers that are uh, helping you like unload stuff that you know was meant to be like stuff for you to offload. Mm -hmm. um, they kind of pause and give Twix some a couple like narrowed eyes. Uh, you know, put the stuff down and they kind of like don't take their eyes off of him as they walk back. Um, you two both know um, that uh, Warforged not welcome in many Twill settlements. I don't think I would have known that because I'd never seen Warforged or heard of one until I met him. Well, that, that actually, yeah, that's that's a fair point. Um, but, uh, yep. That's fine. I'm Jacob's all ignorant of a lot of stuff, so. Yeah, you certainly have, uh, as there are a number of laws uh, concerning uh, these metal beings these artificial beings. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. We live um, in a society. So yeah. Um, and you also as, hear some... As in they're prohibited from entering certain areas or they need to be... Chaperoned? Uh, definitely. Definitely <laughs> need to be... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> to, not, not to put too fine a point on it, the, they're not allowed or people are going to be looking for the owner? People are going to be looking for the owner. Okay. Oh. War, Warforged uh, do not have rights. That's in what I was thinking. Oh. Yes, they, they are regarded as little more than... than Fancy good. Uh, it's sort of the same thing as just so standard golems. Has right Twixens come up? He's with the group. Well, I'm on the deck. Yeah. Yeah. So, but he has come up from below deck at this point. I gesture for you to come close. Twixen, how comfortable are you with? play acting a role for your safety. Fine. Twill is not a friendly area for those of the mechanical kind. As such, people are going to want to know who you belong to. Me. Mm. <laughs> Is there any chance that you would be willing to pretend while we're here, knowing that it isn't true <laughs> <You're>, I... <laughs> that one of us <coughs> is your custodian? Yes. Who would you like that to be? Anyone. I thought I went ahead to the boat house. Yeah, you did. You, you are, okay, you are not yeah, present I... for this conversation. Okay. <laughs> are we looking at me now? You think that I'm going to be responsible? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure. I mean, yeah, Twixen, I'll look out for you. You look out for me. Okay. Kind of how we usually do. Uh, sounds normal. As someone 
from the area the likelihood that I would be in possession of someone as fantastical as Twixen is low. Mm -hmm. Someone from outside of the area, however, would be much more reasonable. Okay. I mean, this is, this is just in case we get caught up with something. Yes, yes it is. Okay. So, We're in Twillin. Yeah. We will get caught up with something. Um, yeah. Seraph, give me um, give me a history check. Didn't I'm know feeling, we were going this I mean, place I during was, this game. Yeah, I'm like, are we getting like some old South? Yeah, like? we kind of are. <laughs> that is a 24. 24. Very good. Very good. So, uh, this is to give you uh, a little bit of background information that, that you know, um, to kind of paint the picture of what the situation is. Um, so, uh, Warforged, uh, you, you can find them in Twillin. They are exceedingly rare, um, about not quite as rare as your sort of uh, flavor of Asimar. Uh, but about as rare as sort of the general Asimar population. Uh, those that do exist, like, because uh, they, they have no rights, they kind of, um, it, they can kind of be found, like, outside of settlements in, like, temporary trade caravans and stuff um, and almost like shanty towns. Mm. Um, and that, uh, unfortunately, as they don't have rights and are treated as property. Uh, this means that, like, any individual, if they're able to, can, like, just come up and, like, for an unattended warforged and just, like, swipe and, like, try and kidnap them. The kidnappings are very common. And then the warforged are then, like, forced into drudge labor. Um, because, again, like, they're just treated as constructs and golems. So it's just, if you can subdue one, you know, more power to you because possession's nine tenths of the law. Yeah. Um, specifically, okay. this means that they are governed by property law as opposed to citizen, like citizen laws. Um, so, probably not a good idea for Twixen to ever go wandering around on his own. Um, also of note, and you know this, uh, and you have such a license, is that arcane magic uh, and arcane magic users in Twillin, sort of nationwide, uh, have to be added to a registry and must acquire a license in order to, to practice such magic. Oh, well, it's gonna get and into So it. he already has a license. <laughs> you you so. have a license to practice such magic. Um, you're, uh, you o for, you're 0 for 2 here. Mm. And it was, it was more as like a safeguard because sort of the nature of your magic is a little Nebulous, right? It's un. I mean, it's clear, but it's unclear to someone untrained. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to add that to my inventory because I didn't know that I had that. Yes. But I should have that on here. Yeah. So. Um, you also know, uh, okay. in Rosington in particular, is there is a curfew. Uh, at sundown. Uh, it's kind of an unofficial practice in a lot of Twill communities because monsters come out at night and if you're outside at night, you will get eaten. Uh, is it enforced? But in Rosington, it is enforced and in order to operate after dark, whether that means you're a business in order to stay open or in many cases to, like for adventurers, in order to uh, conduct any sort of operations after dark also requires a license. Um, you also know wearing uh, any of the naval colors is expressly forbidden unless you are uh, like an officer in the Navy. What are the naval colors? Uh, so um, navy blue and gray. Okay, good. I'm good. So, yeah. Doesn't match any party member's colors at this time, but something to think about. So with that, 
we're going to take a break.